this is Lisa McLaughlin. I'm the Assessment and Reporting Specialist with the Utah State Board of Education. And this is the Analyze and Understand section of the Innovation Implementation Cycle. Um, hopefully you have already reviewed the other parts of the cycle, because this segment will explore the uh, progress monitoring and how to use data to assess final results of your school improvement plans. Um, so it's assumed that your uh, school community council has already established school goals, action plan steps, and measures to evaluate those goals. And this is probably the last step that you take for the school year, um, but hopefully it's a valuable step in preparing your plans for the next school year. So before we begin, I just want to spend a minute to talk about data. We're going to use this word a lot um, in this part of the presentation and in most of the parts of the cycle presentations. Um, so what are data? Um, Webster's has defined data as facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis, um, or things that are known or assumed as facts, making the basis of reasoning or calculation. Um, it's also referred to as evidence or pieces of information. Um, the reason why I bring this up is because sometimes data is referred to as numbers or statistics, um, but sometimes it can have a broader view of pieces of information, so narrations or testimonials or things that um, can provide information or evidence for um, things that you're evaluating. Um, so when we're looking at, oh, sorry, let's do a cartoon first. So in this cartoon, we have testimony that this person walks like a duck and quacks like a duck. So the conclusion is that he must be a duck. So the evidence gathered is that he walks like a duck and he quacks like a duck, so he must be a duck. Um, this is kind of a very simple analogy about um, how we're going to analyze and understand how our school improvement plans have worked. Um, usually when we are coming up with school improvement plans, we're providing some kind of a measure. Um, most plans need to be centered around um, academic achievement of students, and so you have to be able to measure that academic achievement. Um, so a critical element of achieving desired improvement goals is the ability to measure that improvement um, these measures could be tests, they could be evaluations, they could be um, school projects, they could be performances. Uh, it really just depends on what aspect of student achievement you're trying to measure. Um, but these measures can tell you if the changes you are making, uh, the changes that you make are making a difference. They tell you where you are and where you are going. Um, Measures could really be lots of different things, and the measures that you use help you collect data to know whether the plan that you have set about and the interventions that you've done have really made a difference. Um, for example, there was an article in the news a couple of weeks ago that talked about um, this audit where the state of Utah has spent millions of dollars dealing with um, the homeless issue in downtown Salt Lake. And so the Legislative Audit General Auditor's Office did an audit to see whether that money has been well spent. And the results of the audit showed that it's impossible to gauge the success of the program because they didn't gather very good data. So they said it was bad or useless data. Um, and I didn't read the entire report, but um, it was difficult for the audit to come to a conclusion about whether the programs were successful because they didn't have any measures or data to to determine that. Um, and that's an example of how we need to be when we set up our goals and we set up our plans that we need to be mindful of how we're going to measure our success. Um, just a reminder, your school improvement goals that you use for the school trust lands should be focused on the academic needs of students. Um, the goals should be specific, they should be measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. So generally time-based meaning, you know, how are you going to, is it going to be accomplished in the next couple of months? Is it going to be over the course of the school year? I mean, how are you going to measure that um, 
it says academic achievement is usually measured by some kind of an assessment. So um, what kind of an assessment are you going to use to measure the academic needs of students? Um, assessment measures are evidence that students have adequately demonstrated the knowledge and skills expected of them. So usually when we when teachers will administer an assessment, it's based off of specific academic standards. Um, they expect students to meet certain requirements or certain knowledge based skills. And the measures can determine whether the students know, help them know whether they know what they really know. <laughs> so do they know what they, um, do, how do we know that the student knows that, I guess is one way to say it. Um, so those are the kind of measures that you would use to know whether your plans are making a difference in academic success of students. A um, couple of things to keep in mind. Assessments should speed the student improvement process up, not slow it down. Um, goals should be centered around student improvement, not on measurement. So, um, for example, you don't, their goal should be around the fact that the students are progressing, um, meeting certain benchmarks, not necessarily that they're taking certain tests. Um, measurements are intended to inform the improvement process. So is the intervention working? Did the change make a difference? Um, did the changes that we make help them learn better, be successful, that sort of thing? Are you collecting the right information? What does your data tell you about your improvement goals? So those are all things to keep in mind as you're analyzing the success of your improvement program. So here's an example. This was um, taken from a school's school trust lands goal. Um, this is an elementary school. They have a reading goal. And it says by the end of the school year, the percentage of students that will be reading at grade level will be as follows. And they said 47% for kindergarten, 60% for first grade, 60% for second grade, 65% for third grade. Um, obviously, you can see the numbers there. Um, so these are very specific numbers that I'm assuming they um, came up with because based off of data that they had, um, realizing that these goals are measurable, that they're obtainable, um, and they're realistic. So they're probably based off of perform past performances. Um, they also had additional goal. It says additionally, we will decrease behaviors that negatively affect um, impact classroom instruction, allowing for more effective classroom instruction and reading. So this is actually a two part goal. Um, one is students will read at grade level and two is that we're going to decrease um, negative behaviors in the classroom. So looking at this goal, um, some of the things that they set for their measures is they're going to measure um, reading proficiency by using an assessment called Dibbles. This is a reading assessment that's very popular in the state of Utah. I think just about every school is using it, um, particularly in elementary schools. And it, the Dibbles data is, is administered at least three times a year. They call it the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the end of the year. And then there's also what they call progress monitoring um, that they'll do in between those assessments. Um, some schools do them once a week, um, but each of those measures will give you what they call a pathways to success or pathways to progress where it shows um, where the students are at and what kind of progress they need to make to be proficient over a reasonable amount of time. So this particular school is using the Dibbles data to identify progress and growth of students. Um, the goals are set using pathways of progress reports, which identify the growth of students from the beginning of the year, which is what BOY stands for, to middle of the year Dibbles assessment. This is straight from their school plan. Um, students with a, this is a Pathways of Progress score of 3, 4, or 5 are students who are making typical or above typical growth in one year of reading. So I just had one question on this. Um, the goal is specifically about whether students are reading, meeting their reading proficiency. Um, this measure is measuring their growth. So it was a little bit confusing about whether the goal is are students making adequate growth or are students reaching proficiency. That was a little bit vague. But um, the baseline data is obtained after the beginning of the year Dibbles is administered and each grade's goal is listed below. So now we have new goals about what their typical growth should be. 
So for kindergarten, 50% of students are going to have typical or above typical growth. And these uh, percentages that are listed here are pretty similar to um, what the previous slide talked about with their percentage that are going to meet proficiency. So um, I think this is their plan of helping these students reach those proficiency goals and figure if they're making progress, then they'll reach proficiency by the end of the year. Um, the whole school goal is 68% of students will have a Pathways of Progress score of at least three, four, or five after the middle of the year Dibbles test. And then, um, so what kind of data would you collect? So if you want to know whether this school's improvement plan is successful, um, obviously you would want to have Dibbles data. Um, so we have beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the end of the year are going to tell you whether you're on track, um, whether students are making their growth targets, or whether they're reading that proficiency at grade level. And then um, the question, the goal is specifically about grade level. So how specific does the data need to be? Do you need to know each individual student score? Do you need to know it by class, by grade, by school? Um, what kind of data is going to be helpful for you to know whether you're reaching these goals? Now, the assessment data is just one um, indicator of the school plan. So the plan is actually how are you going to help these students reach these goals? Um, and they mentioned one about tracking negative behaviors in the classroom. So um, you would obviously want to collect some kind of data on that negative behavior. So do you track observations? Do you track office referrals? You know, how would you track data on whether those behaviors have decreased and whether that's had an impact on classroom instruction? And then what other data would you collect? So this is just kind of a brainstorming activity. Um, so there's, you know, is there a process on the action steps? What else are we doing to help these students be successful? And then as always, there's always um, the plan is going to cost money. So you might want to track some data on how much money you've spent and where it's being spent and that sort of thing. Um, so here's an example of this school's action plan steps. So they put in their goal that they're going to, their teachers are going to participate in monthly professional development, which supports effective planning and instruction. So the teachers are attending bi-weekly PLC meetings, that's professional learning community meetings. At the grade level, they're going to identify priority standards, um, success criteria, effective lesson planning, review student data, and that school trust lens money is going to be used to pay for substitutes to allow these teachers to attend these meetings. Um, they're also going to have paraprofessionals who are going to work under the direction of the teacher, and the paraprofessionals are going to be hired to work with the students in small reading group and instruction. Um, the paraprofessionals are going to administer the Dibbles assessments during the school year, which is going to include their progress monitoring. They've also listed reading activities, so parents and students will have the opportunity to attend a literacy night that will provide activities for parents to support their reading skills and their children that their children are learning at home and at school. Um, they've listed a couple of other steps here. It says um, general supplies will be purchased for students to use during small group instruction before and after school and interventions, data books, and literacy night. Um, land trust money will also be used to purchase Chromebooks for students to use in the classrooms. Um, Chromebooks are going to allow students to access software and online learning resources such as um, Lexia, Imagine Learning, and Wonders Reading programs. Teachers are also going to attend the UMTSS conference um, where they're going to learn additional information on how to support um, and implement the PBIS, which is a common behavior management system in each and every classroom. And then they're going to spend additional money on printing of materials for literacy night. I'm assuming that means um, advertisements. Um, looks like they're going to print some activities and the student data books that will help um, provide information for parents to support their students in literacy. So these are all the activities that they've listed. Um, and how are you going to know whether your plan was successful? So what kind of data could be gathered? Um, obviously, we have our assessment data, so we're collecting our Dibbles data. Um, 
but what other data could we collect? So teachers are going to be attending professional learning sessions. So perhaps we could collect data on whether they attended that, um, maybe the kind of conversations that they had. Uh, we could, you know, get some feedback from the teachers about how successful these professional development meetings were, kinds of things that they discussed. Um, paraprofessionals, you know, how many paraprofessionals were hired? How many assessments were they able to administer? What kind of activities were they doing with students in the small, lit the small reading groups? Um, literacy night, so how many flyers did we print out? Um, how many parents attended? What kind of activities were, um, you know, were planned and which ones were more successful? Maybe getting a survey from the parents to see what kind of feedback that they got from attending literacy night. Um, supplies and technology, so um, I believe that was buying Chromebooks and software, um, getting some feedback from the teachers and maybe the tech specialist about the software that's being used. Does it align with um, the standards? Does it help students, you know, help them with their literacy skills so that they can read on grade level? Um, how many teachers attended the UMTSS conference? What did they learn? Was that helpful in um, how did they apply what they learned in their classroom and how did it help them manage student behaviors? Um, how many data books were printed for parents? Um, how well did they use those? These are all things that could be collected to see how effective each of these action steps were in increasing student achievement. So um, coming back to understanding, once you've collected all this data, then you can sit down as a group um, and, and decide how successful you were. Obviously, if you look at your achievement data and you say, yep, we've met all of our goals, check, then our plan was successful, um, which is probably the first step to take. You know, Did we reach these goals? Um, were our students reading at the proficiency levels that we established at the beginning? Um, and if you've met your goal, that's great. If you haven't met your goal, um, I think both ways you can look and see which activities, um, particularly if you're collecting data on all these other action steps, is um, what was really successful? What were some of the things that happened, things that worked well, things that didn't work well? Um, and I think this is a good chance to kind of sit down and have a discussion about what the students' needs are, how are those needs being met, um, how is each person in this plan contributing to um, the academic needs of students? And that kind of comes along with um, not just their achievement data, but also the other data that comes from the action plan. So here's all the different steps again. So what part of the action plan was successful? How did you know it was successful? What part needs improvement? And how do you know? So you may find that having teachers attend the UMTSS conference was very beneficial. They got a lot of great ideas on how to manage their student behaviors in the classroom, which really cut down on distractions and help students be successful. Um, you may decide that um, printing data books for parents was not very successful. Maybe it was just a waste of paper, or you may have decided that the professional learning group, I'm just throwing things out here, who knows, but <laughs> you may have decided that um, it wasn't as very beneficial for the paraprofessionals to do the assessments, that it was it might be better to have teachers do the assessments and that we need to move around substitutes so that um, they could cover the assessments for the teachers rather than the professionals. I don't know. So, you know, this is the kind of discussions that you can have once you have all of the data that helps you um, answer these questions. And then once you've made, um, had these discussions and decided what worked well, what didn't work well, um, you may make adjustments as necessary. Um, there, you can submit amendments to your plan um, halfway through the school year. So ideally, this is not something that happens at the end of the school year. Um, that's the only time you've ever talked about how the plan is going. Ideally, it's a plan that is revisited um, often and you are constantly monitoring your success and how things are going so that you can make adjustments as necessary. Um, but at the end of the school year, you will need to submit a final expenditures report and to see how much money you've spent 
and then provide some information about um, whether that was successful or not. And then obviously, um, if your plan was very successful, you'll want to communicate the results of your plan. Um, I know that the community is very anxious to know how things are going in education. And so particularly at the local level, um, you may want to not only let the school board know, but you may want to let parents know um, how the school trust lands money has been spent and, and to know that what you've done is successful or things that you've learned in the process. So that's just a couple of suggestions there. Um, and then once you've written this, the final report, which I think the principal usually does, but um, it, it's something that can be discussed at one of the, probably the last um, school community council meetings of the year is, um, you know, do you want to continue this goal for the next year? And that just starts you in this process, um, the innovation cycle process again. So, you know, keeping the information that you have and um, it, kind of the idea is that changes usually happen over the course of time and some goals um, may need more than one year. And it's very helpful, especially if you've been keeping a lot of data and been doing a lot of reviews that you may just decide we need another year for this process. So we need to continue this this action step for the next year. And that's fine too, particularly if you've already got it all written out and you've sat down and you've decided that's what's gonna be best for your students. It's really easy to just say, okay, this is gonna be our new goal for the next year. So hopefully this is a very cyclical process and um, it can kind of help with um, improvements over time. And um, if you have any additional questions, let me know. There's my contact information there and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.